there are museums in many towns and cities in Britain. Some museums tell us about ships and sailors, some about aeroplanes. A few look at war, some look at industries, like the pottery industry and the production of cars. Some about railways, some look at science and industry. There are toy museums, natural history museums, sports museums, a museum of film and television, and some concentrate on their own local history. Manchester Museum is the UK's largest university museum, and it has a huge and diverse collection of archaeological items, fossils, Egyptian mummies, animals, plants, and of course insects. So when you come into the museum, you can wander around looking at, and in some cases touching, hundreds of exhibits. But like most museums, Manchester Museum only allows the public to see hardly more than half the rooms in the museum. Have you ever wondered what goes on in the other half, behind the scenes? This DVD will show you that the museum has a number of collections that the public don't see. We are going to look briefly at the area that has the museum's collection of insects, animals such as butterflies, moths, beetles, flies and dragonflies. Many hundreds of thousands of them are kept here. One of the first questions that may occur to you is this. What is the use of having all these insects? A quick answer is that thousands of specimens retained in the museum are examples of organisms collected in the course of research. They are called voucher specimens and are physical proof that species have been recorded from the studied site and identified accurately. The museum acts as a kind of biological library, helping scientists to answer three fundamental questions. What is the animal we are studying? Where is it found in nature? And why is it found there? Manchester Museum, like most museums, keeps its insects in collections in wooden and steel cabinets, and inside a cabinet are stacks of drawers. Some cabinets have 10 drawers, some have 20, and some have 40 drawers. In each drawer, there are many dead insects, which are called specimens. The number of insects in each drawer depends mainly on the size of the insects. If the insects are large, then there will not be too many in a drawer. If they are very small, then there may be over 200 insects, as you can see here. The cabinets and drawers are usually arranged according to a special order of species that has been agreed by scientists and is also grouped by the continent on which they are found. Let's have a look inside a few drawers. Here is one containing dragonflies. This one has moths. And here is a drawer full of beetles and this one has a number of wasps in it. Each wasp in this drawer has a small label that identifies which species of wasp it is. There are many different species of wasps, so not all wasps are the same. Each drawer also has a small drum containing a chemical which discourages any live pest, such as the museum beetle, from entering the drawer to eat the specimens, mostly their heads and bodies. Let's look at the moth drawer again, and you will see that, like drawers in all museums, the moths are arranged in columns, a bit like a graph. And this keeps moths in the same species together. It also helps us to get an idea of how many moths there are in a drawer. Did you know that the Manchester Museum has examples of the largest butterfly in the world? It is called Queen Alexandra's Birdwing. Let's have a look at a drawer with some of these butterflies. You can see that there are very few butterflies in this drawer. This is because these butterflies are huge. It is nearly 30 centimetres from wingtip to wingtip, so they are almost as big as a school ruler. Let's take a close look at one of the females. Like many other adult insects, it has six legs, though the legs are actually underneath the butterfly, so are tucked out of sight. Four wings, two antennae, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. All butterflies and moths begin life as an egg. Here are the eggs of one of the species of moths, a large yellow underwing, which a female laid on paper. After a few weeks, the egg hatches and a larva, or caterpillar, 
emerges and starts to feed on the leaves of plants. It spends several weeks or months as a caterpillar, and during this time it grows steadily, becoming fatter and longer. It then stops eating and spins silk around itself to form a pupa. The pupae of many species will often spend this time in the soil. After several weeks or months in the soil, the adult moth will emerge and most live for several weeks. Some adult butterflies and moths only live for a week or so, as they have no mouth parts, so therefore they don't feed. Most adults take nectar from flowers and can sometimes be seen drinking water from pools and streams. We hope you have enjoyed this look behind the scenes at Manchester Museum. Perhaps you will visit Manchester Museum or another museum close to your school. Meanwhile, we have provided some activities for you based on the butterfly and moth collections and we hope that you find these wonderful and colourful insects as fascinating as we do.